Hey everyone, it's Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com and I am doing a Facebook Live that was supposed to be with my friend Kara Der uh, Derringer and uh, we had some technical glitches so instead of uh, rescheduling once again like we did from last week, I thought I would just come on live and say hello and talk about this. Talk about how to become a magnet for success and abundance. Now, that's something that we chose as a topic because we were going to share each share our stories about uh, what we've done to become a success magnet and in our businesses. And so hopefully Kara's in the comments and she's commenting and saying hello um, because I wanted her to chime in on this. Uh, because she has a really cool business that, uh, and Kara, make sure you're putting your website in the in the comments. Um, but she has a really cool business. You know, I've been doing business for it's 17 years this August, and uh, I've learned a few things about a few things as far as how to run a successful money making business model. And um, Hey, Dusty, Lindsay, Lou, nice to see you guys here. Thank you for watching. And good morning to you, Lindsay. Yes. It's funny. I just sat down at my desk uh, ready to do this live, and uh, I was running around all morning, and 9 a.m. is usually when I come and sit down at my desk. And um, so for some of you, this is funny because I get asked this all the time. How do you do all everything that you do, Katrina? And you know, you must work 24 seven and I don't want to work as hard as you. And I laugh because like literally I sleep in until 7.30 sometimes. Sometimes I get up early six or sometimes I get up at 5.30. It just depends what time I go to bed. And last night I went to bed pretty late because I was doing some stuff. But um, <coughs> I get my seven to eight hours of sleep in every night, excuse me, which is, the number one key to more success and abundance, frankly, because if you are tired all the time, that is not going to work, right? I'll take my glasses off so you can see me, although I look a little tired. <laughs> I look a little tired today, but honestly, I'm not. I feel really good. I've got great energy. Hey, Dusty. Um, but one of the things I do is I make sure to take care of myself first. And in fact, I was just reminding my husband of this this morning, and maybe he's watching. I don't know. He's on the road already for work. But I was reminding my husband that he needs to take care of himself first. It's kind of like the oxygen mask in the plane. you got to put it on first before you can take care of everybody else. Well, he's a take care of everybody else kind of guy. And God love him. I love him. He runs circles around this house, and he'll take care of everything, me, the dogs, the kid, um, the house, before he takes care of himself. So not always good. So I'm constantly harping on him to, you know, take care of himself, do a little morning ritual if he needs it, uh, go in the hot tub when he needs it, when his bones ache, right? Get a massage. I'm going to go buy him some massages today, frankly. And I told him that this morning. He's like, no, don't spend money on me. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I spend money on me. I buy clothes. I buy this, these teas and these green drinks that I want for nutrition and weight loss. And, uh, and I buy essential oils because it makes me feel good. I'm like, I'm buying you some freaking massages, dude. <laughs> like, you deserve massages. He's, he does these, uh, he does a very physical job, right? He has a very physical job, and he just turned 50 just a week or so ago. And so he's starting to feel it, right? And um, we're trying to get him out of the job into his own business, doing being a voiceover um, actor and voiceover specialist. So um, there's Kara in the comments. Yay. So Kara, put your... Um, Put your website in there and tell us a few tips and you can type them in as I'm talking. So as I'm going through some tips and things, please share your tips in the comments, Kara. We want to connect with you. So, but I'm sharing this story about my husband because he's proud. He, you know, he makes, he makes good money. He works hard and he works around the house. He makes dinner almost every night, you guys. Yes, this is how I get more done is because he does so much around here. He, well, last night, Riley, our my stepdaughter, actually vacuumed the floor. But usually it's Jason who's cleaning. I'm the one that picks up and organizes, frankly. Um, 
but he does more of the deep cleaning and because he's more OCD. <laughs> and I'm like, man, I'll get to that on the weekend. And he's like, no, I have to get it now. So I'm very thankful for that. But to be more successful and create more abundance, you have to take care of yourself and your environment. Key number one, you guys, that is number one, first and so important. You are not gonna attract all the clients you want unless you are taking care of yourself. Now, could I do more to take care of myself? Of course, okay? I i don't even wanna get into it right now, but I am, I've been working on my health for about three years now. And there's various different things I'm trying, and I'm trying one thing at a time, so please don't throw all your, you know, your links out there to your, to your nutrition stuff. And I'm, uh, I'm doing one thing at a time so I can see what works. And I'm slowly, I, I've been off coffee for about two and a half weeks now. Yay! Not that I don't want it or, or it's bad for me, but I replaced it with something that gives me great energy and I don't need it. So every little thing, right? And is I'm taking steps towards increasing a better body, a better self for my myself because that brings more success more uh, more abundance more clients in my business it really 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 does it goes hand in hand you guys you've got to take care of yourself first and if this video was just about self-care taking care of yourself then you then I could do that but of course it's on me and I have to give you some other tangible tangible, practical, tactical tips <laughs> for more abundance and success too. So, um, all right, <clears throat> where to start? So I have this, um, this brochure that I do when I'm a speaker and one of my signature talks is eight secrets to a consistent money making business. And that's my little brochure for my talk and, um, being in business for, uh, 17 years now almost, um, you'd think I'd learn a few things, right? And I have, and I do a lot of investing in myself and my own professional development as, as well as self-development. Um, and so I've whittled them down to these eight things. And then I have another, well, I'm full of uh, strategies and, and stuff like this. So I'll go through these briefly um, for you so you can kind of take notes yourself and see, okay, where might I need to spend a little bit more energy or time uh, in growing my myself or my business so that I can be more successful and more abundant as well. And Kara says, I agree, strategies are so personal, unique for everyone, yes. So beyond the self-care, right? Enough sleep, drinking enough water, and being hydrated and eating, uh, a, I, I prefer to eat smaller meals throughout the day. Uh, I think it keeps my energy up and I don't um, crash. I don't crash hard if, uh, if I do that. So I'm not the one that teaches you about the health, but I'm gonna slap your wrist if you're not doing it. Forgot <laughs> for sure. So step number one, or secret number one is know your big picture vision your goals and believe it's possible. This is something that a lot of people do maybe once or twice a year is they do some goal planning, visioning, uh, they set their big vision. Uh, you might even do a, a vision board. I have one over here, a vision board with all the images and stuff of the things that you want or what kind of success you're looking for. And, uh, but then, not everybody looks at it every day. You don't look at it every day. You don't set your the tone of your day based on your big picture vision. And that could be a mistake, especially if you tend to get caught up in the minutia of the what to do every day in your business, then you might wanna go back and revisit your vision and really sit in that for at least a couple minutes. Now, I'm not a meditation kind of gal, okay? And in fact, one time I consulted a psychic and this was when I was a little skeptical of Skype, and I'm so not, but they uh, told me, I said, you know, I feel guilty because I feel like I should be meditating every day, and everybody I know says you should be meditating for like 20 minutes in the morning as a morning ritual, and I'm like, I sit there and I think of my to-do list, and that's not meditating. And the psychic told me that I'm so good at manifesting that I really only need 90 seconds to meditate, and I'm like, hallelujah. And so, 
<laughs> I do my meditation in the shower sometimes. It's really funny. So I'm like, oh, you know, while I'm showering and then boop, I'm done, I'm out, and I can move on. So I'm an action taker. I'm an action taker, but I also do take time for that. I just don't need as much time as some other people. I don't need a half an hour of journaling and visioning and meditation. I don't need that to be motivated. I don't need that to keep my vision on top of mind. I don't need that to keep my energy up and to stay focused and to keep my head in the game. I am so in the game, it's not even funny. So, but if you need that, take it. You know, know your own body, know your own mental and physical capability and needs for sure. And Kara says, Big picture visioning needs to be a daily practice. Yes, surround yourself with your big picture images. Yeah, like if you want to, I have some people, one of my friends goes to Kenya a couple times a year and she brings magazines to these Kenya ladies, uh, color magazines, and they, and they roll them into beads and then they make jewelry out of them. And then she brings back the beads and she sells them at her speaking gigs. So she's a, she's a speaker and she gets speaking gigs. She tables in the back of the room and she sells all these beads with her books and stuff and supports the Kenya ladies um, with, uh, she probably is a single-handedly supporting their economy for God's sakes, right? So what are your big visions? So who do you want to support? How do you want to serve the world? How do you want to make a bigger change in the world? Or in just your local area is fine too, or just your family. Whatever your vision is, it doesn't matter as long as it matters to you. It doesn't. Don't let us make you feel guilty for. Um, don't let anybody else make you feel guilty for not having a big enough vision, please. Oh my gosh, because I feel sometimes like my vision is not big enough. Like I don't feel like I. I want to help more people that are trying to build businesses because those of us who are building businesses are doing better in the world. And the more money we make, the more impact we can make or the more good we can do with that money. That's why I'm doing what I do. All right, so secret number two of building a consistent money-making business is developing the right pricing and offerings for you and your ideal lifestyle. This is something that I usually have to help clients fix every time I talk to them because they come in and I say, well, what are you selling? <laughs> How many of you have been on a call with me where I, or at my events where you're like, uh, confronted with that question, what are you selling? And you're like, well, I help people, blah, 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 blah. No, that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you, what are you selling? If you are not super clear on the business models of what you are selling, meaning you have a six week group program, you have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, six month program, you do one-on-one -on -one healing sessions for this price, you do a live workshop, uh, you have a retreat, you have a virtual training, you have a membership program, what are you selling, right? If you're not clear on what you're selling and what the price point is and you don't feel valued at that price point or maybe you do feel valued but you're not really charging what you're worth and because you're too scared to charge more or you're new and you think I'm new, I should charge less, I'm a beginner, whatever, whatever. Um, you got to develop that right pricing and those right offerings to fit not only who your target audience is and what they're looking for, but also to fit your lifestyle. Because sometimes we work way too hard because we're constantly doing a business model that takes too much time, perhaps, and doesn't bring us enough money in the process. So figure out what business models need to be put in place to reach your money goals as well as your lifestyle goals. Like if you can only work 20 hours a week, then you don't necessarily want to base everything you do on one-on-one -on -one work, right? Because that'll take a lot of time. Unless you're charging $1,000 an hour, five clients a week is, you know, $5,000 a week, and that's $20,000 a month, and that's fantastic, right? If that's you, great. But uh, most of you probably aren't doing that. So <laughs> unless you want to do that, then figure out maybe some different business models. And Kara says, uh, business is about delivering value, always over delivering value above and beyond the price. Yes. So make sure, though, that you're not over delivering so much that you've underpriced yourself, right? So I have some bookkeeper clients and I have some other types of clients who uh, or coaches who say they have an hour session or they're going to charge by the hour to do this work. But then 
they either go over in their session and go over to an hour and a half but still charge the same or they um, find a problem say in the bookkeeping arena and they find a problem and they go investigate it and go fix it and clean it up for a couple hours but they don't charge the client for those two hours which that's a mistake what you need to do is you need to inform the client hey I found this issue we need to fix it first of all it's the client's fault because it's the client's books right so it's not your fault as the service person that you found this problem it's you know if if you did something wrong then yeah maybe you're gonna fix it for free and you're not gonna charge to fix it but if it's something that you uncovered that's that's not your problem then you need to charge for your time so I do believe in in over delivering but I also believe in making sure you're charging for your time okay all right so secret number three is and Dusty says thanks Dusty don't give it all away for free give give yes and uh, secret number three is exude massive confidence to attain positive expert positioning so exude massive confidence to attain positive expert positioning now confidence comes with clarity and clarity comes with when you know what you're selling you know how much it is you uh, you know who it's for you know what the uh, the transformation is that they're going to receive when they work with you and you're super confident on the pricing and the value and everything you're delivering and and that you are an expert in what you do now it's it's not as easy to just come out of the gate in your new business feeling that way hopefully for most of you you do feel that way in your own business right now um, if you don't then we have to get you enough clarity uh, to increase that confidence we have to get you paid okay sometimes it's just a matter of getting one or two or three people to pay you at a certain rate that you feel valued at today uh, in order to increase your confidence so that you can increase your rates and then you go get more people to pay you at that new rate and once you get paid at that new rate it's like whoop, instantly increases your confidence and if it's time to raise your rates again then you do it again and you keep going and going and going so we gotta get clarity around what you're selling so you can have confidence in talking to people about it and offering it and asking for people to buy it right and invest in you um, and then you have to get paid you have to get cash flow because that brings more confidence so confidence is is a practice that develops over time you will once you you know practice and practice and practice brings more confidence so I highly believe that you can do that and one of the things I tell my coaching clients is that if if trust me uh, I say this is what I think you could charge for what you're doing and I know you can get clients at that if you are confident enough to spit that rate out <laughs> so sometimes we have to I have to tell them to charge as much as you can possibly say without stuttering and some of you have heard me say that at my events and stuff but charge as much as you can possibly say without stuttering stuttering is bad if I said um, if you ask me how much my coaching was and I said well it's uh, it, it's um, it's uh, 300 300 an hour then you'd be like really are you sure <laughs> and you probably wouldn't hire me <laughs> because I was I wasn't sure myself right so so think about that when you're doing that what did Kara says exactly like the points you made earlier confidence links back to health big picture vision Comfort in the value of your pricing, it's all linked. Love this, great. Kara, keep keep chiming in, Kara, because we want to hear from you too. Um, and for those of you who just joined, Kara is <clears throat> the gal that was supposed to be on here live with me today, and the technology gods just did not allow that, so I'm on live and she's on the chat. So say hi to her, her website's in the chat, Kara Derringer. All right, so um, eight secrets to a consistent money-making business. Here's the little inside. Some of you have this because you've been to my events. Uh, so we're looking at number four. Implement smart, <coughs> consistent, yet ever-evolving marketing practices. <coughs> hey, Randy. Hey, Sarah. Uh, nice to see you guys here. Thank you. Um, so smart, consistent, yet ever-evolving marketing practices. What does that mean well you're gonna have to be somewhat open to new technology new ideas 
Now, I'm not a big early adopter, and that means that if something comes, it's a bright, shiny, it's brand new, I usually don't jump into brand new marketing strategies. Um, I want to see how they play out. I want to see how people um, respond to them. I want to see how it works for people that are doing it. So I follow people who are early adopters and who try new things like that. Um, so I'm the more tried and true, proven marketing strategies that work. Although there's frustration with some of that because some of them don't work as much as they used to, like email marketing doesn't work as well as it used to because the market's just overcrowded with email marketing and spammers and all this kind of stuff. And I think a lot of our email addresses have been hacked and, and you know, it just makes for a very unsettling uh, strategy because a lot of times when you send an email out to the, someone for the first time, it will now go into spam or trash. And there's nothing that we can do about it other than just call them and say, hey, go do a search for my email in your inbox, right? So you want to be open to the evolution of what else is possible, what else, what other kind of marketing strategies and lead generation and follow-up and sales strategies you can implement in your business. This is how to become more of a success and, and money magnet and client magnet is because... <sighs> You, you you need to be doing more than one or two things. It's just simple. You can't just be on Facebook posting and then maybe emailing and hope to get, you know, build multiple six-figure business. It's, it's really not that easy anymore. There's a variety of things you need to be doing, which is why I teach about 20 different marketing strategies, and there's more every day. Ye yesterday, I was just learning more about SMS marketing, yeah, Randy put in text marketing is becoming very popular. And I was just listening to a training on it yesterday, in fact, about text message marketing. And it's been around for many years. But see, I saw the fact, I saw the thing where if you started, what I saw is people would sit or from stage, they would do a text message thing from speaking on stage, for example. And they'd say, text this word to da da da, da and you'll get them an email but then they never texted you again. One person that I think has, I've ever signed up for their text messages have ever actually continued sending me text messages and since they still haven't. So I don't see a lot of follow through with people in text message marketing, for example, but I do think it's going to be a good strategy and I'm looking at starting to embrace that myself but it's just like email, you can spam on text messages. You have to get people's approval. You can't just start texting someone. And you need to use a, 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 a opted in service, a text message service, an SMS service. You can't just randomly text people or put them in a group in your text messages. That's against the law. So be careful how you do certain things because this is what happens is I see people and clients of mine or people that come to my events and calls and they'll say, well, I'm doing this now. It's like, well, how are you doing it? Because if you do it this way, it's against the law. If you do it this way, then it's okay. But that means you have to jump through a couple more hoops. You have to set up a service. You have to put some um, pre-approved messages in there. There's things you have to do by law to do that one strategy. And that's just one strategy amongst 20 something. Let's see what Kara has to say. Kara says, always be willing to shift marketing strategies, or as I love to say, flow. Move toward what is working, do more of what is sticking. Marketing is about what resonates with other people, not necessarily what you think should happen. Love that, Kara. Yes, and I say this all the time too, is that market? it's not about what you like or don't like in the marketing world. So if you like to get postcards, if you don't like to get direct mail, that doesn't mean you shouldn't be sending it to people. I send so much direct mail. That's what I was up doing last night is um, I don't have a personal assistant locally right now. I'm looking for one if anybody knows anybody in the Sacramento area. Um, I need it to be local, not a virtual. And uh, so I was addressing postcards and um, sending out books. I have a whole bunch of books to ship out from people that bought books. And uh, so I was addressing, and yeah, I'm exhausted from that, but I don't usually do that that often. And uh, but direct mail is a must. It is an absolute must, you guys. I have new postcards I just did for my speaker success boot camp coming up in June. Uh, it's in Sacramento, well, Roseville, really. But um, if you want to become a speaker, you want to come to that. 
postcards. They're not that simple. I mean, they're not that di difficult. I just do little ones. Some people say, oh, you have to do the big ones. I don't agree. Everything goes in the mail. Everything gets seen, okay? I think just doing anything is better than nothing in direct mail. So, <clears throat> exactly, Kara. Dusty says it's about them. Yes. You... It, Marketing is about relationships, and it's really about community these days. So building community is should be a number one uh, top of mind thing for you right now. So whether it's a community of your email followers, uh, your Facebook or LinkedIn followers, uh, your Twitter followers, Instagram followers, or you're building an actual group or membership of a community, um, <clears throat> whatever your idea of a community is, is what you want to focus on. You don't just want to have clients, you want to build community these days. People want to be in multi in communities. Now, I'm in multiple communities, so don't just do one either. Don't be involved in just one community. Now, that um, you want to be in multiple different communities so you can have a variety of people. I am with I could name on them all, but it's a lot of different women's organizations and speaking organizations that I'm a part of, and I'll pop in on calls on Zoom, or I'll go to live events. I was just at one this last weekend in Reno with 100 women from all over the country, and it was amazing. Uh, and then I see those ladies on Zoom calls throughout the year, and uh, it's, it's community. And then I have my own community. So I'm part of communities, and then I build my own community. I have like three different communities myself, right? The Jumpstart Your Marketing and Business community on Facebook. I have the International Entrepreneur Network that I'm building community with. That the, That's the $7 a month membership that I run now. It's brand new in case you didn't see it. And then I have the International Speaker Network community, which is on Meetup, but it's in person and it's online as well. So um, yeah, so build community, but also be involved in community. And Dusty says community riches. Yeah, riches are in the niches, and the niche doesn't have to be your service. All right, let's move on uh, to secret number five to a consistent money-making business and more success and abundance in your life is enlist systems, strategies, and team to stay organized. This is probably one that people don't always like to talk about or do because they don't want to stop long enough or they're not that detailed. They're the big picture person, but they're not the detail person or, um, or you are the detail person and you're too caught up in this stuff and you're not taking enough action. Uh, but it's part of the plan in really building a successful business is making sure the things that you are doing, like the follow-up and the direct mail and things, I have a system for it. I just don't have someone to implement the system right at this particular moment, at least not the direct mail stuff. But I do have someone to do the data entry for me um, virtually, but I want someone local. And uh, I have someone that does some of the email stuff for me. So, you know, as far as like the follow-up system, that's one of the main things that I teach. Uh, and that people hire me for or they buy my program, right? This is my jumpstart your follow-up system because I've been doing it for, I don't know, 20 something years in different businesses and jobs and stuff like that. And you, you have to have a system for that. If you are going out to networking events or doing speaking, but you're not really fully engaging in that follow-up, oh, you are leaving thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on the table as well as making an impact with all those people that you've met, they are, you're not following through. You have to follow through, you guys. If you are not doing a good job with that, meaning more than just one phone call or one or two emails, uh, you have to get that in place. Come and see me, I can show you what to do and make it really easy for you. But, um, but systems for everything, systems isn't necessarily a technology. People say, well, what system do you use for your email marketing? I'm like, that's a technology and a platform, it's not a system. It can be a system, but the system is more of a process. So it's the step-by-steps that you that you do to get an action uh, implemented, in my mind. So 
It's the strategy around it. It's the process you want to do or you can have somebody do. It's like a standard operating procedure in your business. That's the systems we're talking about. And if you don't have those written out, then you're probably working three times or four times or five times as hard as you need to be working. And this is one of the things I love to help people get in place because if you are working too hard at that kind of stuff, then you're not spending enough time in the lead generation, marketing, follow-up, and sales processes. If you're doing all the minutia of the admin stuff or the follow-up yourself, you need to get systems in place and team. I would not be where I am today in this business without my team. And my team has changed over time. If you are lucky enough to keep the same assistant or two um, for years and years and years, great. But usually they go in about a three-year cycle for me. So I have uh, some virtual assistants who typically will work for me for about three years. And then it's just we kind of grow out of, you know, we part ways of some sort and not in a bad way. Um, but, you know, I have a new team now. For example, I have still a couple that have been with me for a while who do a few things here and there. But... Um, a team is not one virtual assistant. So if you're looking to delegate and you're looking to get started delegating, please pick up my ebook that I have. I did it, I, I created it with you in mind. With I created it actually for my mastermind clients, the people that are in my mastermind, because they're the ones that are on the verge of hiring their first assistant or building their team and they just didn't know what to do. So I have this huge checklist in there of things that you could delegate. And when you identify what it is you're ready to delegate, delegate, then you can um, figure out, okay, who you need to hire. Don't go say, well, I need an assistant and go hire someone and then say, okay, now let's figure out what I should delegate. That's backwards, right? So get the checklist. It, in it includes stuff around um, how to hire, where to find people, how to train your team, because we're not necessarily managers, right? I am definitely not the best manager <laughs> by any means. Uh, but I, so I had to learn all this stuff and I put it all into this ebook and it's like $27. It's no big deal. I'm not here to sell that. But if you want it, go get it. It's at jumpstartyourteam.com, jumpstartyourteam.com. And you can get that um, because if you hire wrong, it's just going to waste your time and money in the wrong place, right? Then if you can hire right out of the gate correctly. All right. Let's see. Janet and Melissa, Welcome. And Kara says, surround yourself with people who think big and play big. This also enhances your confidence. Yay. And Lindsay says, set and stick to boundaries. Yes. You know all about that, huh, Lindsay? You're good at that. <laughs> all right. So step number six is, or secret number six to a consistent money-making business, and I'll show it again, is um, embrace the right technology to make your life easier. Please, 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 please embrace technology. However, the warning here, <clears throat> again, I'm the realistic, practical girl with the big picture vision, right, is don't get caught up in too many different technologies and put things all over the place because you'll be in chaos. So if you're, especially if you're not that techie, be careful listening to this person who says you need this app and this person who says you need this platform and this person who says you need this technology and this person who says you need this technology. If you listen to all those people, when I guarantee they did not, they did not spend an hour with you trying to figure out what your business model is or what you're doing in your business first before they advised you on what technology they think you need. That's ridiculous, first of all. I would never do that. I always evaluate and analyze where people, somebody's at and what they're selling and what they're doing and what they want their lifestyle to look like before I advise on a technology. So if someone is quick to advise you on technology, I would actually not listen to them because they're not paying attention to you before advising you. Just saying, that's, that's just a, a warning. That's warning, warning, warning right there because I see too many people, and myself included, this happened to me back in 2008, okay? In 2008, I had probably 12 or 14 different monthly membership fees for all these different technologies and softwares and all this stuff. And I didn't even really know how all they all work together. And I wasn't using half of them and it was in chaos. And I was spending like a thousand dollars a month that I didn't need to be spending. Okay. And when I finally cleared it all out and decided, okay, I only need this and this. <sighs> I could breathe. My life was easier. 
and everything ran smoother. More things got done because I had less things to worry about. And what do you know? I'm spending less money every month. Hallelujah, right? So be careful, please. And I love to help advise people on technology um, in the proper way because I'm not going to have you go off and spend $300 on this thing if I don't think you need it, frankly. I'm not going to do that. I don't, that's just how I am. So eh, there's that. Okay. So <laughs> number seven is sustain a positive money mindset with swift money making decisions. This is, this is a, something that we all have to work on all the time, I'm sure. I don't think there's anybody watching that has the perfect money mindset 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. If there is, please comment. I'm waiting. Okay, so <laughs> um, it's something that will come up all the time and you can't beat yourself up for it. You just have to acknowledge and say, oh, why did I just think that? Or why did I just say I can't afford it? Or what is that about that? Okay, I'm gonna cancel, cancel, and I'm gonna set that over here. So thanks for sharing my subconscious. Thank you for sharing, but I'm going to go do this instead, or I'm going to, you know, forget that thought and I'm going to, how can I turn that into a positive? Instead of saying the negative, how can I turn it into a positive? You have to just start becoming aware of when you're saying things and, and writing things and thinking things or sharing things that are negative. And you know, my husband catches me doing it, I catch him doing it, I catch clients doing it, and even people that I'm just talking to for the first time, I'll say, did you know that you just said this? And they'll be like, oh, you're right, that's why, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, well, just be aware. Be more aware of your thoughts and be more positive. Um, and about the swift money-making decisions, I tell you, every, <clears throat> Everyone I know that's super successful, meaning multiple six figures or seven figures or even eight figures, they evaluate a situation or a decision and they'll make a decision quickly. They don't let it linger for four months. They don't say, hmm, well, let me think about it for a little while or let me talk to my husband, let me talk to 14 people that I know just to procrastinate the decision because I don't know if I should spend the money or I don't think I can afford it or whatever, whatever. No, if it's something they need to do, they will figure out a way to pay for it. If it's something that they know they shouldn't be doing or they shouldn't be doing right now, like what I always say is the order of importance and making sure you're doing things in order of importance for you right now, wherever you are. So if you uh, need to make fast cash um, and you need to make your mortgage this month, right? You need to make money and it's now the 29th of the month, 29th, 30th. I don't know what day it is, it's close. It's the 30th, I think. Um, but if you need to make your mortgage in the next five days, then you better just get on the phone. Like, or get to a networking event, make an easy yes offer, get them to a phone call, get people on the phone and see if or how you can help them. You need to get some more personal connections going if you need fast cash, period. Fast cash is not sending a quick email for most of us. Sometimes it is. Some of you have a really good responsive list. If you have a really good responsive list, run a super sale today and say, hey, for the next 24 hours, if you buy this thing, you'll get it for this much and blah, blah, blah. And hopefully you can bring in enough money to pay your mortgage. But um, running a bunch of stuff on uh, Facebook or something or Instagram or just is a longer sales process, right? And so if, if that's your goal, then you have to make sure you do the right activities. And so just make sure you're making those right decisions, those swift decisions. Okay, Kara says, money mindset, striving to be aware of any thought rooted in scarcity. Yes, we cannot be rooted in scarcity. You cannot have these scarcity thoughts. Thank you, Kara. If you can expand on that and give any tips around that, that would be amazing. Because money, you know, I do, um, well, I do this event every year called Love and Money Live about getting more love in your life and money in your business. And so I always bring in like a money mindset coach or speaker because I mean, I can talk on it all day long. I just like change your mind around it. This is how much you charge now. And it's not always that easy. Sometimes it's ingrained in us since we were four years old because our parents were telling us we couldn't afford that. You can't have this toy. We can't have this, this state tonight because we can't afford it. And that kind of stuff gets in your subconscious and it comes with us until we decide to not let it come with us anymore. And you can make that decision to let that go. Some people just, uh, you just, um, some people just 
think they have to keep it. You don't have to hold on to that money, that money, negative money mindset. You have, you have to figure out how to turn it around. And sooner than later, right? I probably turned mine around in my 40s, whereas I'm seeing a lot of younger folks when they get into coaching and self-development, they're turning it around in their 30s, right? But I have some clients that are still turning it around in their 60s and 70s because they just never have been confronted with that yet. So it's something really, really important, you guys. All right, and so the last one, the last secret to a consistent money-making business, according to me, <laughs> Katrina Sawa, uh, in my, uh, my eight-step system, is uh, don't settle for anything less than 100% personal happiness, love, and support. And this really should be number one, but I knew that if I said that first, you'd be like, yeah, yeah. This is the glue that holds it all together. This is the glue, you guys. This is the mortar between the bricks to make your wall, um, to keep your wall from falling down. This is the foundation of your house, just like the, the nails and everything, it keeps your house secure. This is the most critical piece because if you are settling anywhere in your life, your business, your job, you hate, uh, with any negative family member, even a significant other who is not 100% supportive of you and 100% positive, like encouraging, not like, well, if you don't make some money this month, you might have to go get a job. That is not supportive. That is negative. That is toxic to your entrepreneurial energy. Uh, you know, sometimes support is wrapped up in a negative, um, manner and you they say oh i support you 100 percent, honey but if you don't make money in the next three months you're gonna have to get a job that's not 100 percent support you guys that's not and i you know i know because i divorced somebody who wouldn't see wouldn't even didn't even want to see the big picture of what i wanted to build and where i wanted to go and didn't want to allow me to invest money in myself and my business way back when when i started and I had to make the, the decision to let that marriage go. And granted, he's a great guy, because many of you know him, he's a fantastic guy, but we just, once I became an entrepreneur, my vision went from here to wah, it blew up. Because I thought, I learned all this stuff that was totally possible, and I knew what else is possible then. And so I was like, oh, well now I have these dreams, and now I have this vision. And do you want to come with me? And he's like, no. And well, can you support me? And he said, no. I'm like, well then, I gotta go. Because I don't want to settle, right? I don't want to settle for the next 30, 40, 50 years without doing my dream now and being who I need to be and serving who I need to serve and, and, and you know, taking those risks and things like that. So don't settle because your happiness is what's going to attract abundance. If you are not happy in your personal life, you, it will show. It will show to the world and you, uh, you will not get the kind of clients you want to get at the rate you want to get. You will not have all the confidence to spit out the $500 an hour or the $5,000 for your package. Whatever it is you need to spit out, you will not have all that confidence if you are not getting fully supported at home in your personal life. I'm telling you, you can't just shove it under a rug. You can't just ignore that right now to build your business. It is not going to work for you, and it is not going to bring you abundance if you don't pay attention to all of it, please. All of it. It is so important. Even if you need to pay your mortgage right now, if you focus on your personal life and was happier, something would come to you just in time to pay that mortgage. I know it. I know it. And you have to trust and believe that that will happen. Please take care of yourself first. Remember the oxygen mask. Take care of yourself first with your love life, your self-care, your personal love for yourself, your environment, the people around you, letting them in or pushing them away or putting a bubble around you and going, la, 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 I can't hear you right now because I'm pr protecting my entrepreneurial energy. You have to do that, you guys. I'm telling you, I've learned over years and years and years that this is the key. It's the glue to building a successful money-making business is to make sure you are completely happy in your personal life. Now, 
don't get me wrong, things are going to happen. People are going to die. You're going to get sick every once in a while. Someone's going to be ill, and that's not happy, but there's still love there, okay? So I get that I'm not saying nothing's ever going to happen to you, but um, but you can you can decide who you hang around with and how you keep your energy. All right, let's see what Kara says. So Kara, the for example of the money mindset, I think my partner and I were talking about family budget last night. Good for you. I do that too. And I caught myself saying things that my parents used to or that those around me say. I know better, but these messages creep into our subconscious. And that's so true. And, you know, my husband uh, is amazing, but he his work isn't bringing him as much commission as they did last year, for example. And so he's feeling down on himself and, oh, I can't afford the massage because I'm not making the money. I'm like, well, I'm making the money and we are a team. We are a team, you know? So we're going to make sure you're taken care of, I'm taken care of, Riley's taken care of, the dogs are taken care of. That's first and foremost. And then it's everybody else, right? Then it's everybody else. So stop saying you can't and figure out how you can. Thank you, Kara. And then she says, make sure you build a support network all around you who are generous in their thinking, in their actions, and in their compliments. Yes, we need compliments, right? Uh, they will support you and remind you to live in abundance. Thank you, Kara. That's a great saying. And hi, Erin. All right. So, uh, those are some of the things that I wanted to impart today. And so I kind of did like a little signature talk. And you know what's funny is I didn't really mention too much about myself. I think most of the people that were on here, uh, at least live, know who I am. But in case you don't know who I am, and Kara, make sure you're putting a little bit about yourself in the comments as I'm sharing now. Um, if you If you aren't really sure, yes, I've been in business for 17 years. La la, but what else, right? Where did I come from? Well, I've been in sales and marketing positions and jobs since I was 16. And I've learned almost everything I know about business and marketing from those jobs, from life experience, from uh, being and doing it with clients and, um, and businesses that I work with. And I mean, yes, I have a degree in marketing and all that, and it's that's great. But I I know that the real world experience that I've gotten has become has been from the investments that I've made in my coaches, my masterminds, going to workshops, listening to other trainers and other experts in their field, and grabbing all that wisdom and then just morphing it into what I see is the right advice for me. Um, some I'm pretty intuitive and I'm very capable of making sure that I put what's important to my business and my family in order of importance. What I see though is a lot of times some entrepreneurs like yourselves possibly don't put the things in order of importance because you just don't see the path. I see the roadmap and the path three, four, ten years from now for myself, but also for anybody that I talk to. And it's it's a skill. It's a learn it's a skill that I think you either have or you don't have. I think you can learn it, but it's something that is really cool to have. Um something personal about me. Yeah. And it's all great and things are great now and, and so what how can you relate to me because you're just starting out? Well I started out too. I've been through a bankruptcy in my business. I've had lots of health challenges with myself, my husband, and my mom, and other family members. I've had a lot of things happen, life happens over the last at least 12 years, and my business still continues to move like a smooth running business because I set it up early, early on to be that systematized, automated, and delegated type of a company, right? So you cannot wait to do that. Um, I highly recommend, you know, if something took me away from my business right now for two months, whatever it was, good, bad, ugly, vacation, whatever, two months away from my business, I would still make money. 
I would still be making money every month. Um, number one, I could re work remotely with clients that are paying me, but I also have things going on. I can also delegate. I can also uh, put people to facilitate some of the calls. I could, and I can still serve the clients is my point, okay? Because I've set up the right business models and pricing, and I really, really think you can too. And you can't just say, well, not in my industry, or they don't do it like that with my kind of business, or my business is different. Stop saying that. That's a negative thought, and that is not going to bring you success and abundance. You just want to say, I, I don't know what else is possible. Maybe I just don't see what's possible, and you know, get some insight from someone like me or Kara who can look at what you're doing, look where you really want to go, and see what's possible for you, and maybe you just don't know what you don't know. 100% of the time when I talk to clients, it's, it's usually that. It's usually they don't see and they don't know what they don't know. And it's a matter of getting some new awareness. Um, so I've had a lot of roadblocks. I've had a lot of things come up and life still goes on because I paid attention and set it up the right way. I stopped. I don't get busy myself up every day to and avoid the important tasks that need to get done. Uh, for setting my business up for success, okay? So if you don't know how to do something or don't know how to set it up like that, you need to reach out for help, period. What else are you gonna do? You're gonna wait till you figure it out and it just drops from the sky? It's ridiculous, right? So um, on a personal note, of course I'm married, you heard, to Jason. It's gonna be our four year anniversary this summer and uh, we've been together about seven years. We live in Roseville, California, which is near Sacramento, and I do live events out here, and, and I do them a little bit closer to home now, and so um, it's super fun. I run a Live Big Mastermind, which is uh, about, we have about 24 members, and it's a real tight-knit group where we get online and we do live meetings, and we really help each other grow our businesses. Um, I have a stepdaughter, Riley, who is 10. I have two German Shepherds that are both rescue dogs, and we love them. They're so sweet. Um, and so we have a pretty full house around here, and we like to take vacations. Um, so those are just a couple fun things about us. We're kind of homebodies, though. We're homebodies. We like to barbecue. So if you're in the area, make sure you reach out. Um, I'm very accessible to people. I really love meeting people in person. Um, I still go networking in our local area. I'm never going to be too big or too much of a guru, whatever, to get to a local networking event because I thrive on that energy. I thrive on community, energy, people, and I love, love, love that. So that's a little bit more personal. And if you want more of this, of me, of masterminding, I have a super cool opportunity for you. Um, to get more. And in fact, our next mastermind calls this Thursday night, but we have three calls a month in the International Entrepreneur Network. And it's something brand new. So we get on Zoom where there's a whole bunch of people on the thing. And actually, we probably have never had more than 10 people on a Zoom, well, maybe 14 or something. But, uh, but there's 66 members right now, and it's growing pretty quickly. I just started it, you guys, in February, and it's $7 a month. So it's a no-brainer. Because I have a smooth running money-making business already, I want to help more people. And so this is my way of helping more people. And so you can go to iEntrepreneurNetwork.com. It's on the back here, iEntrepreneurNetwork.com. And you can join today for seven bucks a month. You can cancel any time, but why would you want to for seven dollars? You can come to up to three calls a month. We've got a private Facebook group, and the more people that join, the more calls I'm going to add. And we talk about everything. It's just, it's not me talking at you either. It's not about me. It's about, okay, what do you need help with? And what do you need help with? And let's give you advice. And it's not just me giving advice, it's everybody else. So this group is for seasoned business owners too. So if you're a seasoned business owner, you want to join and come to these calls because you can add value, but also you can also get clients out of it. I do this all over the world with other groups that I belong to. I told you I'm a part of a lot of communities. I'm a, I get on a lot of Zoom calls with 30, 40 people on them, and I'm in the chat room talking to people and setting up calls and appointments for follow-up. Okay, and then I get clients from it as well as joint venture partners and things. So you want to join as, as many of these types of communities as you can. 
Uh, and this is the new networking. It's the new networking, you guys. You don't have to go to a networking event. You go to Zoom. And there's no travel. And you don't have to be, you will never be late. You'll never be caught in an accident and miss something because it's on Zoom. Now, I say that, but then there's technology. Knock on wood. <laughs> like technology glitches. But I would love to have you be a part of the International Entrepreneur Network. Again, it is for the greater good of entrepreneurs to build more successful businesses doing what you love. And I am just here to facilitate and hold space and give as much advice as I possibly can if, if, if and when needed. Just go to iEntrepreneurNetwork.com or reach out to me at jumpstartyourmarketing.com if you have a question or want to chat. Okay? And then let's see what Kara put in the thing. So Kara is a speaker, a three-time best-selling author, and success coach. Yes, she is. And she wants to connect on social media. So make sure you Facebook her. She has her website in here, which is Kara Daringer daringer.com k-a-r-a d-e-r-i-n-g-e-r.com so uh, thank you for being here Kara in spirit and thank you for sharing this uh, she said thank you to me and thank you to her thank you thank you all around uh, and I'm sorry that you couldn't be on live but thank you for chatting with us and you guys have a really great day and um, go do something powerful. Go reach out to people. They are waiting to talk to you. You just need to pick up the darn phone, please. Okay? <laughs> or call me. I'll talk to you. All right. Bye now.